Hello, I'm Isia Lopes Sendes and I'm here today to speak about the work by Dr. Simone Avancini published in Brain. The work is about a condition that's called focal cortical dysplasia. This is the cause of severe epilepsy, mainly in children. The patients with focal cortical dysplasia, even with the best treatment available, may continue to have seizures. Sometimes uh, surgery may be uh, used. Uh, however, even after surgery, the patients may still continue having seizures. Therefore, the development of new treatments is essential. So thinking about that, Dr. Avancini proposed a new model that she constructed using uh, biological material from the patients. With this, we may be able to develop new treatments and to test the treatments before using in patients. Hello, my name is Alison Watry, and we team up with uh, Dr. Sandes group uh, to reprogram the patient cells, uh, generating iPSCs from each of the patients and controls, and then using our in-house functional cortical for brain organoid protocol, uh, we differentiate these iPSCs. From a panoramic perspective, we could already see some form frosted rosettes, which is a characterization of the uh, absence of an organoid column of the neuroepithelium. And if we zoom in on these organoids, we see that these rosettes have a decreased number of neuroprogenitor cells surrounding uh, the ventricular zone. Uh, and by the way, the ventricular zone has a fragmented accumulation of ZO1, um, showing like bright spots in the middle of the lumen. So all of that, um, and compared with our, and, and, and together with our uh, molecular findings, suggest that Rho A proteins are misregulated in patient derived organoids. Um, we next uh, extend our morphological evaluation to later stage organoids, looking for a more mature cortical plate. And uh, we could mimic several hallmarks of the disease. One of them is the presence of dysmorphic neurons. These are neurons with uh, enlarged soma. Most of them are new N positive cells and they are much bigger compared to controls. The abnormal soma size was found in around 25% around of all neurons analyzing the focal cortical dysplasia organoids. We also found the presence of uh, cells that resemble balloon cells with a lateral displacement of the nucleus and phenotypes suggestive of a mixed progenitor cells and neuronal lineage. Finally, uh, we analyzed the electrophysiology of uh, the neurons inside these organoids. We use both spontaneously and optogenetically evoked electrical activity. And we found that uh, a hyperexcitability in the networks of the patient cells. Our results suggest that this emerging excitability exceeds the normal threshold in the patient organoids, where neurons appear to be hyperconnected and the signal propagation is enhanced as reflected by a higher response rate and type of activity elicited by the optogenetic stimulation uh, in the uh, focal cortical dysplasia. This find not only corroborate the presence of the hyperexcitability, but also reflect a faster and increased spreading of the spikes as uh, typically observed with patients with epilepsy. In summary, our data points to a molecular disruption in the neuroepithelial neurojunction cells that would affect how the neurons form the cortical plate, leading to alterations in the network that would make those patients susceptible to epilepsy. There are limitations to our work. Some of the caveats include, including the low number of patients, we use only four patients, a large cohort that would be needed to independently validate our findings. Also, we are analyzing organoids at very early stages where the inhibitory neurons are not yet present, so we cannot study the GABAergic contribution to these networks. Nonetheless, the fact that we don't have these inhibitory neurons in there uh, shows that uh, they are not required uh, to these early stages of the network susceptibility. We hope that this model will uh, be useful to test and screen new theories, new ideas uh, regarding focal cortical dysplasia, as well as finding novel treatments for this condition.